Uh, hello, folks. Welcome to day eight of the 31 days of Howling Beasts. I am uh, your your host for this, I guess, Mr. Gary Hill. Um, usually, I'd play a trailer before the review and do my little outro here, but I do not have a TV spot for this film because it was a TV movie from 1977 known as Snow Beast. Uh, Stars some great people, but um, I'm I'm gonna leave it to the guy who's doing the review. Who you guys may know from Bite Size Cinema and um, General Legion, uh, great guy, Mr. R. J. McCready. Uh, take it away, sir. Hello, everybody. This is R. J. McCready from Bite Size Cinema, and today I'm helping out my good buddy Gary Hill with his 31 Beasts for Halloween for Cinema Beef podcast. So Gary gave me a list and said, pick one of these movies, there was a ton on there, and one just stood out from the crowd, and it was Snow Beast from 1977, and I thought, I better jump on that one before Ricky Morgan does, because this is a Ricky Morgan film, so sorry about that, Rick. Um, But yeah, Snow Beast, the synopsis here is, a Colorado ski resort is besieged by a subhuman beast that commits brutal murders on the slopes... It's a TV horror movie. It's released um, on CBS back in the day. It's got a very high 4.7 on IMBD. Uh, it's actually a PG movie for a horror. Uh, it's a little bit toned down. I think there's two versions here. You've got a 78 minute and an 88 minute. I think CBS did a late version, then you've got the early version. Um, what I like about this film is the actual cast. You've got Yvette Minou, who plays Ellen. And I remember her from The Black Hole. Um, and I also remember her from The uh, Time Machine, if you turn the clock back a little bit there, no pun in that. Uh, you've got Robert Logan Tony, and I was thinking, where have I seen that bloke from before? And uh, it sort of jogged the memory, The Wilderness Family, if anybody remembers that. I think that was another TV movie. Um, Clint, oh, Clint Walker, so you've got a couple of hard, hard men here. You know, it's a bit like the... Uh, sort of Schwarzenegger and um, Dolph Lundgren of the time because you've got Clint and then you've got uh, Bo Sevens, who's a Swedish actor and he's also in uh, a couple of other movies, the original Inglorious Bastards and the uh, and the Delta Force. And also to mention, Clint Walker was also in, uh, I remember him in The Dirty Dozen as well. And he's also in another, I think it's another TV movie around about this time, which was the Killdozer which actually wasn't too bad. And I think that might have been inspired by Jaws as well, which going on to that point, this this movie is obviously inspired by that. You know, Jaws came out in 75, did very well, and everybody jumped on it. And, um, you know, what's bad to chuck in the Bigfoot as well here in this movie, because the Bigfoot was kind of hot press at the time in all the mystery uh, books and stuff like that. I seem to remember that. Um, But yeah, no, the film, it's... um, it's okay, it's not too bad, you can find it on YouTube, um, it's not a bad 90 minutes, um, it, it did make me laugh in some places, because when you do, when you watch the beginning of this film, it is like a skiing holiday resort, because for the first five minutes you've got two ladies skiing in the snow, and they're skiing. And they're skiing, and they're skiing down the slope, and then skiing again, and it goes on and on and on, and you think, hey, let's take a while we're watching it. <laughs> and then... Um, after this first five minutes, very early doors, you get a POV shot of the, the monster, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. I like that, that POV shot. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the um, camera f- or the POV from the Evil Dead. You've got something going through the woods and then you've got this all sort of like growling noise. And um, yeah, the, the other thing that made me laugh here was, you know, you've got these two skiers and everybody seems to be really good at their profession, whatever they're doing. You've got some guys on some ski mobiles and they're doing pretty good with that. But as soon as the monster turns up, it's like they just go to shit, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, they got to go from an expert skier to this thing following them and they're like, oh, and then they fall over, lose their skis. And then there's that thing, isn't it? Um I think this was portrayed in the Austin Powers movie. You know, when something god awful is coming towards you, and there's about there's about a fifty meter distance, so you probably get away from whatever it is. But you, <laughs> you've got the person screaming, and the thing's getting closer, and they're screaming, and the thing's getting closer, and you're thinking as the audience, you could probably run away by now, but they don't. And um, the other clever thing here is when someone does get killed, uh, the the screen goes red. And then it just freezes, so there's a little bit of drama there with that. And the good old term, less is more, is used in this film, and I just think it's probably because it's a low-budget movie and you don't really want to see the guy in the costume in the suit, but you know what? 
it, it, it does kind of work in a way, like I say, with the PAV shot, you're seeing it from the angle of the beast going through the snow. And for the most part, you see its backside running through the woods or we just see a clawed hand coming out. So, um, yeah, it, it's OK. Um, so, yeah, just moving on with the um, storyline. So you've got a character, Tony, he's played by Robert Long- Logan. Um, he finds he's, he's part of the um, like a patrol to look after anybody who goes astray um, on skiing trips. And he finds the dead uh, female. Uh, it doesn't say anything about it at first, and whilst he's out in the wilderness, he does see the beast in the woods, and he's not too sure what it is, and he can only describe it as not an animal and not a human, but it's something in between. And it's got that thing where it's the carnival season. Obviously, they don't make a. This is their time to make the money, and this is like the amity with the town mayor where he goes and tells his uh, I think it's his grandmother or something who's running the town saying look you better close this place down because I'm not sure what we got out of there we've got some beast running out there and it's going to be killing people and then obviously you've got the uh, stick your head in the sand and denial and we just let things go on because we want to make money and you know people get greedy um, so from here onwards the movie uh, moves along you get a couple more kill scenes here uh, with that POV shot and the screen going red and then the film chucks in and just a little bit of drama between Gar and Ellen they're trying to rekindle their their marriage in the film didn't really feel necessary but they chucked that one in there um and then it gets back to a the middle scene in the movie where the snow beast turns up to a school parade in a hall and it does an attack and it kills someone in a car and then the this is where the it's kind of like the mayor getting the comeuppance in Jaws, where the um, Tony's uh, nan then suddenly realises that they do have a problem in the town, and the sheriff steps it up a little bit, and they go out on a patrol and they try and kill the beast. And as a result of this, the sheriff comes back with a grizzly bear and he says, oh, I've killed it. Um, and again, I'll make a reference to Jaws. This is the tiger shark scene here where, the, you know, he's trying to convince the town that this is it. He's a little bit suspicious that it might be something to do with a Bigfoot, but he's not completely convinced with that. Um, then it goes to Gar and Ellen. They're having a bit of romantic time in, in a cabin and the beast turns up and he attacks them. And so this is where Gar now says, this is personal, I'm going to take it on. And it's funny because there's a scene here where Gar goes, I'm going to go out and kill it. And Tony turns up and says, nope, that's going to make two of you because I'm going. And then he goes, nope, that makes three of you because I'm going. And then the sheriff turns up and says, well, you might as well make that four because I'm coming as well. Do you know what I mean? So you <laughs> and that's the other thing with this film, you know, because it... it it could be a comedy, but it takes itself seriously. But as an audience, you're watching and you think, that's hilarious. But you get into the final act now. So they go out, they go and kill the beast. They have a, an attack where the beast kicks some logs down the hill. The sheriff gets caught up in a in a car where he gets crushed. He gets left behind. He then gets killed with the red POV shot, as I've mentioned so many times now. Um, and you're now left with... Um, Gar, Tony and Ellen and you've now got the final scene here where they're trying to shoot it and Gar lures lures a beast towards a tree and he picks up a ski fork and he basically impales the the beast with that and that's how he kills it and um, you never really actually see see the beast at all there's no there's no sort of big big reveal it's just either a leg or just a bit of a face or the bit bit of the back or the leg um and then that is it that's how that's how the film closes um so yeah it's you know what it's not too bad um it's it's entertainment it's 1970s tv entertainment like i say the high points is the it's in the snow there's a little bit of isolation um like i say the pov is quite good um even though you don't see the beast i would say yeah less is more doesn't work too bad um and it's also got a uh digital resolution now which has done this film pretty good so you can you can get that on on blu-ray um so yeah there you go snow beast uh that is my review take it with a pinch of salt don't take it too seriously <laughs> It's, it's probably a, one of those films you want to watch late at night about 11 o'clock and um, you may be entertained by it. So uh, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Gary, 
happy to help you out with this uh, 31 beast of uh, Halloween. And as always, guys, keep it bite-sized, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, that was a great review by our man, Mr. 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 RJ McCready. Um, Original bite-sized cinema. It's about bite-sized, that review. I'm I'm proud for doing that because he gets on with uh, guys like me and guys like Dan Bone. He just go a long time reviews and, you know... I missed the short ones, dude. He gave us a nice uh, short review of uh, Snow Beast. Seemed to like the movie. But tomorrow, I'll be back again, flying solo, to give you guys a review of uh, a little film, a little western slash monster film uh, called The Beast of Hollow Mountain.